Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 survival horror game series and in today's video we are going to be continuing on with the gameplay side of our game. Having said that if you aren't up to date with the Unreal Engine 4 uh, survival horror game series I definitely advise you to check out the last video so you can sort of see a breakdown of exactly what we're doing so what we did yesterday in the last video was we did a breakdown of the objectives and today we are going to start implementing them so if you remember from our level plan uh, which I will show you any second now basically the first event was going to be to pick up some firewood. So what I'm going to be doing today is essentially just fixing up the inventory and then we're going to set up a basic event to, you know, change the objective when the player's got the free the free, you know, pieces of firewood and it's going to change it to tell them to, you know, light the fire. And we're going to start with, start start making the sequence to light the fire and everything. So you know, we've got some really interesting stuff today and I really hope that you guys enjoy it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into it. So before I do, I'm just going to quickly show you the level plan just so you can see exactly where we are, what we're going to be doing and so on. So my Photoshop's just opening a little bit slow by the powers of editing. I should probably, you know, just skip it and everything, but I am a lazy fellow. So here's our level plan. So the first objective was collect firewood and that's shown on the screen just fine. The next one is going to be light the fire. So what we need to do then is we just need to pretty much fix up the inventory system so when I say fix up I just need to pretty much add in the additional slots because we can pick up one piece of wood and that's working just fine but the issue is when we try and pick up you know two or three it's just it's just blue or you know it doesn't change the color so that's what we need to do so I can pick up one just fine and if I run over to the other one in the middle of the lake over here it just turns blue and it's the same with the third one and whenever I do click these to you know discard them they simply just don't go and I also need to fix that little clicked effect as well because we don't want it there so the first slot is working all good so let's go ahead and fix everything up so the way we're going to be doing this is all inside of the survival HUD widget so that is basically the user interface side of things so I've just got to find the blueprint for that so for me that was in third person BP and then blueprints and then survival HUD widget. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to fix the pressed, you know, the little pressed clicky thing that we don't want because we don't want to see the image when we click it. So if you remember in the last video, we did change the opacity to zero so you can't see it by default, but I just didn't change that for hovered and pressed. So we just pretty much need to change the opacity down on those settings to zero, which is pretty straightforward. So let's just go ahead and do that. So the first button was done just fine. Make sure you're doing this on the button uh, items and not the image in the background as well and make sure these are all lined up correctly too so just go ahead and change the opacity on here one two three just like that and four that's looking good and as well we also need to do that for the pressed as well so we've just done it for hovered go into tint again op opacity alpha zero 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 and zero so I'm going to go ahead and compile that and I'm going to press play and see exactly what happens now. So if I press control to discard, there's no little clicking image that is perfect. So that's the first thing off our list. So the next thing that I need to do is pretty much set up the six, uh, the tick, the tick sequence to change the image based on the slot ID. So we've done that for the first one already and I pretty much just need to copy and paste that kind of that stuff over to the second slot, the third slot and so on and so on. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to open up my survival HUD widget again and this time we're going to go out of the design view and we're going to go into the graph view. And it's looking a little bit intimidating, but if you remember, this is where all of the magic happened. This is where we set the brush from a texture, so we changed it to an image based on the ID. So basically what I need to do here is I need to copy this little section here where we actually, you know, switch it based on the int. And we need to make sure we hook it to all of the outcomes. So when we have extra IDs for different items, we need to make sure it hooks up. So we need it to switch the first one first and then the second one. And we've got to change a few values around here because this time we don't want to set inventory one or two. We want to change it to two. And we're going to do the same for three, four and five going along like that. Hopefully you guys should be able to sort of get the picture. Cool. So if you, you know, add more items, you're going to have to do it in each one of these. Um, this is probably going to be the easiest way to do it for now. Um, so all i got to do now then is I need to get the slot 2 item for the second bit. So I'm just going to grab my third person character reference over here. 
And instead of getting slot 1 item, I'm just going to get slot 2 item. And I am just going to hook this up just like this. And that is working all good. And I'm going to get rid of inventory 1, get rid of inventory 2. And I'm going to get a reference to inventory 2 here. And I'm just going to chuck it in, get the reference, and chuck it into the targets just like that. So now it's going to be referencing, you know, inventory 2. So I'm going to go ahead and press compile. I'm going to press play. Hopefully these should be completely blank. That is working good. So we've got two of these slots working. And if we were to go and pick up some of the logs, the firewood, that's one. And that's two, and it's working great. So we just got to do the same thing for the other three slots now. So it is a bit time consuming, but you know, you can really see our inventory system, you know, sort of working to get uh, working great now. So I'm going to pretty much copy and paste this a couple of times. So slot three, slot four, and one more time just at the end here. And bam. So. I'm going to go get a, a couple more references from the third person player now. So slot free item. And I'm also going to grab slot four item. I'm just trying to do this as quickly as possible. Hopefully you guys should understand exactly what I'm doing. I'm pretty much just copying over the logic and just basically just changing the targets. And that is it. So I'm going to drag this one over, hook it up into here. Sorry, so this is going to be slot 3, this is going to be slot 4, and there should be one more at the end, and that's going to be slot 5. So I'm just going to drag this over just to make it a little bit cleaner. There you are, and one more, that's perfect. And now I'm just going to join all of these up, making sure that we link in everything there, so we have both outcomes going to, you know, the next section or the next sequence even. So that is looking good there. And now all we need to do is pretty much just change the targets for all of these slots here. So we've got slot one, two, three. So we're gonna get slot inventory three over here, get a reference to that. Slot four, not slot four, so inventory four. So this is just the image that we're setting the target to at the moment. And lastly, slot five down at the end there. And we're going to make sure we took this up to the targets. That's done. There you are. This is looking good. There should be just one more to do here. There you are. So we're going to compile that. And we are going to press play and see now. Hopefully they should all be blank and that is working just good. There you are. So we've got one piece of one logs. And uh, let's go for another one. Number two. And hopefully number three should be over here. There you are. So we've got three logs in our inventory and that is great. However, if I recall correctly, two of those you can't actually drop because we haven't set up the, the click event yet. So that's the last thing that we need to do. And then we can start setting up the objective stuff to... Um, what is it? So when you collect three logs, it will change the objective to light the fire. So let's go ahead and do that. So the way we did that... If you recall, we went, we had the little button here and we just have a click event for that. So if we go to on clicked, if we go to view, you can see we got this whole sequence for the first one. So pretty much all I'm going to do here is I am going to copy and paste this whole sequence and whoops. So I'm just going to copy and paste this whole sequence and we've got to do that a couple of times for slot one, two, three. And once again, we're just going to be changing the targets so it changes, you know, the right slot and everything. So I'm just going to control C to copy that. And then we're going to go to designer again, get the second button and we are going to go down and we are going to create an on clicked event for this one too. And all we got to do here is just go ahead and move this over. We're going to delete the original reference for inventory button 1. And this time, all we need to do is just pretty much find all of the references to slot 1 and just replace it to slot 2, I guess. So let's go ahead and do that. So over here, third person character, we had a reference to slot 1. So this time, get slot 2 item and just hook it up just like that. And if there's any other references, we also need to iron those out. So there we are, so that is looking good for now. So let's go ahead and try that. Hopefully the second slot should be working. So collect one set of wood, that's fine. And let's go ahead and collect another one. 
And hopefully now then, we should be able to get rid of both items. So, for whatever reason, it didn't want to let me drop the item there. So we're going to have a quick look at the code and see exactly what's going on. So we're going to go into the graph view once again. And we've got slot 2 item. And slot... Ah, there we are. So it's setting slot 1 item to 0. So we just need to change that, make sure it's slot 2 item. So once again, set... Let's delete that. Set slot two item and we're just going to set it to zero because that's our ID for you know empty so let's go ahead and try that again and see what happens so I'm going to press play jump in so that's one wood piece of wood over here that we're going to collect and we're just going to run all the way over the lake to the second one and hopefully now we should be able to drop it there we are and it dropped just fine we can drop both items and they will be on the floor just below us. So if we go ahead and walk over them, we'll get two in there. That's great. So, we pretty much just need to do the same thing for the other three slots now. It's just a matter of copying pasting things. You know exactly which targets to change. So we just need to go ahead and do that. So, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you guys to copy and paste it for slot 3 item, slot 4 item, slot 5 item. For the next tutorial I could let you guys do it as homework. Um, but for now what I am going to do is pretty much whenever you pick up a wood we're going to add it to a variable that tells you how much wood we've got. And then from that we can you know sort of tell when to change the objective to light the fire. So what I'm going to do for that then is I'm actually going to need to create a variable in third person character and inside of here we've got to create the variable and we're just going to call this num number of wood for now and we're going to change this to a integer because that's all we need for now and we're going to set the default value to zero and that is working all good and then inside of our wood inventory item pickup we pretty much just need to add you know one to that value when it's, once it's picked up so Let's go ahead and do that. So we're just going to cast a third person character as the object, get object wildcard, not object wildcard, get third person player, what am I doing? So not get third person player, get player character, I believe it is. It's been a long time since I've done a lot of the blueprint stuff, so forgive me there. And then all we're going to do is set number of wood and we're just going to pretty much change that to plus one so we've got to add one so integer plus integer and then we're just going to get a reference to get number of wood that is perfect number of wood plus one and then I'm also just going to get it to print the string as well just so we know exactly how much we've got So let's go ahead and test that now and see if it is working. So number of wood, did I collect it? Is one on the first one that we picked up. And if we go and run over the second one, it'll set it to two. But when we drop it, it's not going to change that. So we need to add that last bit of functionality in there. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that. So if you remember, that will be in the survival HUD widget. It's pretty much going to be at the end of the drop sequence. Uh, so when we drop the wood here, so select item to one, we need to just, you know, cast to the third person character and set number of wood to minus one if we drop it, just to make it all work. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for you. And then I'm going to end off the video and hopefully in the next video, we are going to start up the sequences for, you know, setting the, the wood on fire and that kind of stuff. So set number of wood. And this time we're just going to do the opposite of what we've just done. And we're essentially going to do integer minus integer. And we're going to get a reference to number of wood. Because we're just trying to get the original value. And then we're just trying to, you know, minus one from it. So take away one from it. And then print string. There we are. And we're just going to hook that up just like that. And hopefully now that should be working. And what I also need to do then is I actually need to copy and paste this little ending sequence over to over to the first slot. So let me go ahead and do that. So it's these little items here that I need to do that to. And I'm going to move it up just like that. And bam. Hopefully 
that should be working. So we're going to give it one quick test. We should have, oh, whoops, something's broken. And I've got to make sure I hook this up as well. So the target for the number of wood is going to be third person player. But let's compile that, press play, and see if it works. So there's still some kind of issue. So let's go ahead and look into that. So target for this also needs to be here. Compile it. Hopefully that should get rid of any errors. Let's press play and see what happens. So if we go over the wood, it collects it. And we saw the little one in the top left hand corner because it's printing the string. And two. And uh, yeah, so let's just go ahead and discard these now. So if I press one, it's gone down to one. If I press the other one, we've got no wood in our inventory and it's gone down to zero. And that is working perfectly fine. So what I want you guys to do is pretty much just copy and paste these little scripts over. Just doing the same thing as I did where I just changed the slot two item to slot three item and over here slot two item to slot three and then do the same for three, uh, four, five and so on. So that is pretty much everything that I wanted to go over in this tutorial. I know it was a little bit longer than I'd like it to be, but I've got, we've done quite a bit in today's video. We have fixed the press image. We have changed the tick event up there to support extra slots. And we've also created the click events for, you know, the additional icons. So we've done it for two, uh, for the second slot. And I'm sure you guys can figure out how to do it for the third slot, the fourth slot, and the fifth slot. If you do guys have any questions at all, make sure you feel, uh, make sure you leave them down in the description below. And I'm sure myself or one of my other, you know, anyone else in the, co in the community will try and help you out. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.